This week on Machinery Pete TV, Ken Darby's retirement sale features some dream machines, like this 2011 Case IH Patriot 4430 sprayer loaded with options. What's red and green and jumbo sized? We'll take a look. And Pete's watching the price trends on mid to upper horsepower used tractors. Your machinery is a serious investment and at the heart of every farming operation. Some call it a passion. We're Machinery Pete TV, and today we'll cover everything from auction roundups to the classics to the latest trends and technology. Machinery Pete, the most trusted name in farm equipment. Machinery Pete thanks these premier sponsors for their support. Sullivan Auctioneers, a big iron company. Let our team of professionals show you how to make your auction a success. Visit SullivanAuctioneers.com. For farmers working to lift, change, and repair tires, check out the Tire Grabber at TheTireGrabber.com. Big Iron Auctions and the Share Your Legacy program, promoting the future of agriculture with amazing legacy stories from across America. Hey folks, welcome to Michigan. This week, Machinery Pete TV, we're in Allegan, Michigan for the retirement auction for Darby Farms. Now, if you don't see anybody milling around, it's because it's an online sale by our friends at Big Iron. And I tell you, some really nice equipment on the sale today, including a 2014 9230 Case H Combine, could be a hot seller, and then a sprayer, a 2011 Patriot 4430. Those things have been pretty hot lately. Now, before we get rolling, it's time for Share Your Legacy from our partners at Big Iron. Throughout the Share Your Legacy series, we've discovered some amazing equipment. We recently visited one of the largest collections to date. We caught up with Jim Meinhart of Wamego, Kansas. Well, we started in 1967, farm equipment business. He represented Ellis Chalmers and New Holland Equipment. Uh, started with a 50 by 100 building in Wamego and three employees. And it is now called Can Equip, 14 dealerships across Kansas and Nebraska. Well, to start with, I want to preserve the history. And uh, this is one way of doing it. Uh, my dad kind of started collecting when I was still at home, and we knew a little bit about that. Kind of dragging equipment out of the fence rows, you call it, and just kind of stayed with me. And when we came over here, probably didn't trade for much the first few years because we didn't have any money. Well, probably one of the first things we traded for was a 1909 International truck. It's sitting behind us in the corner. A uh, guy came to me, I had one salesman, uh, no money at that time and uh, he wanted to trade this truck on a combine and I told my salesman, no way, because I kind of need to sell the combine and need the cash. Uh, he came back 30 days later with a picture of the truck and I folded it, so we traded for it. That kind of got things started um, and we got more into the farm machinery. Okay, it's a Ford 8N with a Funk, if you UNK conversion to put a, a V8 engine in it. Uh, everything has been rebuilt and reconditioned. Uh, it's, a, it's a great tractor. It's one you don't want to turn the grandkids loose with because it does run fast, but it is a very good unit. Well, it's all original. Uh, it's a 1940, like you said, V8 flathead. Uh, everything, the interior and everything is just like we got it. We actually traded for it on a, what they call a boring bar for engine blocks and the guy was in his 80s and traded it to us for that boring bar. When the auction's coming up, we should have around a thousand pieces from tractors, combines, down to pallets, parts. My name is Jim Meinhardt, and I'm very proud of our legacy. Visit BigIron.com to watch full episodes and to submit your Share Your Legacy stories. For over 40 years, Big Iron has been America's trusted name in auctions. From farm equipment to real estate, 
to livestock and classic cars. We offer full service support to all of our sellers. In 2022, Big Iron acquired Sullivan Auctioneers in an effort to elevate the level of service provided to our customers. Both companies sharing similar small town origins, our stories begin the same. Combined, our over 80 years of experience has established best practices to better serve our customers in the online auction space. With our large online selection of equipment, engaged bidder base, and full service approach, we take pride in consistently exceeding our customers' expectations. Big Iron Auctions and Sullivan Auctioneers, truly, we are better together. Hey folks, Machine Repeat here. You've got to try this. The power of foam is the only way to clean and degrease your equipment. Simply foam it on, give the foam a few minutes to work, and power wash it off. Cuts grease and your wash time significantly. The foam won't harm electrical sensors or controls. It neutralizes and washes away farm chemicals and is safe to use on most surfaces. Call 888-996-7801 or go online to check out their dealer locator at powerofoam.com to find the power of foam near you. Super Sharp Listings from Matichek Implement in Faribault, Minnesota. A 1996 Case H 7240 two-wheel drive with 6,707 hours fresh straight in from Iowa. 2008 Case H Steiger 485 with 3,596 hours, 1,000 PTO pre-def. 2013 Case H Steiger 500 with 1,999 hours, fantastic tires and duels. A 2011 Case H 6088 combine with 1,898 step hours, super clean, no def. Go to Matichek.com, they won't last long. Hey folks, I'm here with the uh, farmer owner seller, Ken Darby, Darby Farms, Allegan, Michigan. And uh, Ken, you have a very nice sprayer here. Yeah, it's been an excellent unit. Um, it's a 2012 mile, it's got around 4,800 hours. Okay. A 120 foot boom. I think, other than aim command, it had every option you could get at the time. Um, it's got the ultra boom height control uh, sensing as well as. Uh, swath control and auto steer. Just a pleasure to run and operate. Um, smooth hydropower is just amazing on these machines. I have a set of 71038s that I bought brand new as well. We farmed uh, a fair chunk of muck ground and uh, so it, it was nice to be able to put the floaters on right. if we needed it. Um, made a whole difference there. But uh, no, just an, been an excellent machine and uh, it's been a pleasure to run. Now Ken, I know we talked before and you travel quite a bit to yes, source your used equipment and this sprayer came out of Nebraska? It came out of a small town um, right on the Kansas, uh, Missouri, or not Missouri, excuse me, um, Nebraska line. And uh, it came, uh, it was in a co-op. Uh, first I had a little reserve but then as I looked around the place, I could see that they were very conscious and taking care of the machine. And it made a yearly trip to the dealership in Grand Isle um, to be serviced and ready to go. And that kind of complemented the machine and I, it gave me the confidence to buy it. And it's been no regrets. It's been a very good machine ever since. And Can you bought it? Me. You bought it back in 2018? Yes, sir. I bought it in the winter of 18. Well, uh, February of 18 okay. and uh, been on the farm since. And, uh, I'm guessing uh, now the market was a little different back then. It was a little so I'm, there soft. Was, I'm, guessing, I'm guessing you probably got a pretty good deal. At the time, sprayers were quite positive in the market as far as there was quite an availability of them. And uh, that has since changed. Right. And I did not want to have to rely on the local co-op myself I wanted to be able to spray when I felt I needed to spray instead of and it gives me the flexibility of doing it when I wanted and how I wanted and uh, just was such a simple machine to run coming from a pull type rig into a self-propelled um, going from an 80 foot boom to a 120 foot boom I thought this is going to be an education and it wound up being a very smooth transition and, and a very easy to run machine. All right, folks, we're going to talk Cornhead here, and Ken, you have a Drago uh, GT8 roll. Can you tell us about it? Yes, sir. I bought it 
halfway through the 21 season, we had a lot of issues with down corn, needed to have something with the end augers, had a Drago head that did not have the end augers, loved the head, um, it was a series two, had the opportunity to move up to this one with the augers and the suspended uh, deck plates as well as everything else on it. Just a beautiful head. I completely went through it before going to the field in 22, put new gathering chains and everything on it, ran flawless, nothing wrong with it. Just never ran a head that could harvest corn the way the Drago does. I'm not a company affiliate, but I just, it is one of them pieces of equipment that didn't know a lot about, took a chance on, and wound up being a very good a chance. It, it, it's been a, just a tremendous head. Um, highly recommend the company. Very good to work with. And you had an earlier Drago head. Yes, the series. Um, I had a series two, um, which is still made today. It's just a little. Uh, I believe, and I'm not the machinery uh, expert, but I believe it had a smaller uh, cross auger, which worked fine. It just didn't have the, um, originally at the time, uh, the end augers. And with that down corn, it would the head fed excellent, but you would still get that ear that hung over on the sides of the head and we couldn't get it to, you know, we needed to get out either and put it in or it would fall out. Right. With, with the auger, it would slide up. The augers, you can adjust your speed on the combine and it would help that fold it back into the head and then made it harvestable. Now the GT, your experience, you'd heard with the down corn, and I, I understand it was pretty eye-opening. Yes, it was, and uh, the, uh, between the automatic deck plates and the suspended deck plates, um, just a phenomenal head to run. And once we tried it, we knew right away that this was a really good product. Very safe because the tire grabber grabs it very securely and it's easy to move around and it's just much safer and quicker. Bought the tire grabber six months ago and since we bought it, it's sped up our work doing sprayer tires and farm tractor duels and it's cut our time probably in half on that stuff. Best way I've seen to fix faded paint, Dakota Shine. Made in South Dakota by Dakota Egg Innovations, a company with a 20-year history of working with top construction equipment manufacturers, now offering Dakota Shine to the farm community to help you keep your equipment looking like new and retain more value when it comes time to sell or trade. Key active ingredient from corn, soy derivatives. Order online at dakotashine.com or visit your regional farm stores to pick up your Dakota Shine today. What's that piece of equipment worth? Check out Machinery Pete's auction prices for the answer. Free to view, updated daily, all types of equipment. Go to machinerypeat.com and click on the auction tab, then auction price data. Hey folks, I'm here with Ken and Joy Darby with Darby Farms, Allegan, Michigan. And guys, your sale, first of all, thanks for having me up yeah. to be here and a part of it. Uh, it's a retirement auction? Yes, yes. it is. Okay. Yep. And uh, now, Ken, you kind of grew up right here on the farm. Yes. Been in the family since 1904. 1904. Yep. Over 100 years. Yeah. yeah. And now you had kind of farmed on your own. Yes, I do farm on my own. Have from basically day one. Okay. Um, got the ball rolling on my own in 1988, okay. which everybody knows was probably not the best year to start farming. Um, that was a year though. I mean, I had always farmed, but I didn't go off on my own 100% until then and uh, sure. got educated quick. Okay, <laughs> got, well, you've seen, uh, you've seen the ups and downs yes. and, uh, e about everything there. Yes. Uh, yeah. So as we come up to the sale day here, and I know, I know working with the folks at Big Iron, very detail oriented, yes. uh, and uh, had a preview day yesterday. Yes, sir. Um, what's it been like, and you have a beautiful line of equipment. Well, thank oh, you. Yeah. You've, you've been getting a lot of phone calls, a lot yeah. of work getting ready for the sale. Definitely. How are you guys, how are you feeling at this point? Good. I, I've, I've been, it's uh, bittersweet. Never want to quit, but sometimes you just have to. Yeah. And I'm in that have to camp. Right. So, uh, no, it's a bittersweet. It's, it's, uh, 
next chapter. Yeah, yeah. next chapter. Our, on to our next adventure. Yeah. <laughs> Either a 48 or 49 Simpson Jumbo. They were built from World War II surplus parts by a company in Azusa, California, a Jumbo Manufacturing. They had up through World War II been building uh, train locomotives. After World War II, there was a surplus of train locomotives because they didn't need to haul all the freight, so they got into tractors. It's got a Chrysler, surplus Chrysler flathead six-cylinder engine in it. It's a five-speed Dodge truck transmission. It's got a two-to-one gear reduction behind that. As I understand it, that was used on a, a tank in World War II. It's got a two-ton Dodge truck rear end under it. So basically it's a Dodge truck disguised as a tractor. <laughs> this tractor will run 42 mile an hour on the road. Not that I would advise anybody to drive it 42, but it will. This tractor I found in a hedgerow. The fenders were rusted on it and the hood had been cut with a torch because somebody wanted to bring the exhaust straight through the top of the hood instead of out the side like it's supposed to be. And we use this tractor at the shows and parades. Have done a little farming with it, but it's not really a good farm tractor because of the speed it runs. In, in low gear, wide open, it'll still run about six mile an hour. That's original Simpson colors. It was Alice Chambers orange and Oliver green. The cheapest one of these tractors I've seen was 20,000. The highest one of these tractors I've seen restored brought $70,000. They're pretty rare, pretty expensive, if they've been redone. Hey folks, stay with us. You're not gonna wanna miss our feature item coming up, a 2014 KSH 9230 Combine. This thing has only 1,659 SEP hours on it. Well folks, I've written and talked quite a bit here the past couple of years about what's been happening with good used track tractors very strong buyer demand, strong auction pricing, and of course what we've seen here, harvest of 2023, some of the wet conditions, not surprising these trends are continuing. Now, it just so happens my good friends at Matichek Implement in beautiful Faribault, Minnesota have four late model quad tracks coming up on their online dealer auction Thursday, November 16th. You can check them out at auctiontime.com or on their website matichek.com slash auctions.htm. Of course with Matichek Implement, always absolute sale, no buyer fees and no loading fees. On the 16th, they've got three 22 model 620 quad tracks loaded with warranty for hours, 810, 1280, and 1780. They're also selling a 20 model KSH Steiger 580 quad track with 2801 hours and again, loaded with remaining warranty. Check them out at matichek.com slash auctions.htm. The only way I've seen to safely clean aluminum grain on stock trailers is Bright Plus Aluminum Cleaner from Dakota Ag Innovations. With over 15 years of proven performance cleaning all types of aluminum, the results speak for themselves. Dirty, stained, and discolored aluminum trailers don't stand a chance against Bright Plus Aluminum Cleaner. Safely improve the appearance of your aluminum trailers at home and make a statement with Bright Plus. Order today at TrailerCleaner.com or find Bright Plus Aluminum Cleaner at a farm store near you. Got equipment to sell privately but tired of scams and hassles? Visit MachineRepeat.com and click Sell Mine. MachineRepeat.com, the simple and secure way to buy and sell equipment online. Hey folks, we're back with Ken Darby, Darby Farms here, Allegan, Michigan, and a feature item on our show here today and on the auction, Ken, is your beautiful combine, a 14 model 9230, uh, six, was it 1,650 some SEP hours? Yes, sir. Okay, yes. What, uh, what can you tell us about it? I bought the machine, it's, I've had it for two seasons. Um, I bought it out of Streeter, Illinois from the Case Age dealer in Streeter, Illinois. I'm the second owner of it. Okay. Um, I bought it and brought it home and went completely through the inside, put a new cage and transition cone in it just um it's kind of the hours it suggested that for wear yep. um and uh it's just been an excellent machine for me no issues 
Um, I haven't put a lot of hours on it. Um, being a one-man show, I have more engine hours than separator because I have to run the machine back to the truck more than if I had a cart sure. operator. Sure. But uh, no, it's it's just a, an excellent machine. Um, always a pleasure to run compared to when I started. I had an 815 International with a V8 gas engine. And I was going to ask so you So that uh, oh, quite man. a, quite a, uh, from a span of time, 815, 1480, 2166 to a 2388, 8010 to a 9230. So I've uh, spanned the generations of red iron as that's, a combine. That's a pretty good lineage. Right yeah, there. and that's why I was uh, confident that I had enough know-how to be able to do the rotor cage and uh, transition cone myself. And I did do it by myself other than a little help putting bolts in the transition cone that I couldn't reach the put the nut on. And Ken, now talking uh, before we started filming here, your, uh, that ability to work on machine, that's been a big part of your operation yes. as a, because again, you were farming on your own. Yes, I do farm on my own and it's, yes, it's, it's just second nature to me. Um, I talked to a good friend of mine that's a Case IH mechanic in Indiana on combines and uh, when I bought this and I said, hey, I'm going to have to do some work. What do you suggest? And he's like, well, you probably should have two guys help you with the rotor. And kind of got it home and time crunch and everybody else is busy. I'm like, I'm going to figure this out on my own. And I did and wouldn't want to do it with help today. Um, because... You sound like a Michigan farmer. <laughs> well, to do you got to be crafty. Yeah. <laughs> Any farmer has to yeah. be. Well, folks, you know, March and April, two of the busiest months on the auction calendar. And as we make our way here towards the second half of April, I'm continuing to see very strong pricing on good condition tractors, kind of in that loader range, mid horsepower on up to the high horsepower four wheel drives. And now there were a pair of auctions last Thursday, I think that provided some examples of what I'm talking about. We'll start off in Tiffin, Ohio, where my friends at United Country, uh, Walton Realty and Auction, at a farm sale where they sold this 2012 John Deere 9410R four-wheel drive had 1245 hours on it with a 1000 PTO so for 280,000 bucks that's the second highest auction price ever on a Deere 9410R. Now same sale they also sold this 2015 John Deere 7250R 2025 hours on it went for 163,770 bucks once you figured in the buyer's fee, and that's the third highest auction price ever on a 7250R. Now that same day last Thursday, let's go next door over to Michigan and we'll change colors from green to blue. My friends at Socorro Auction Service had some really sharp equipment on a sale, including this 2011 New Holland T6050. 2130 hours worth of loader went for 65,000 bucks, third highest auction price ever on a T6050. And they actually did set a record on this 2015 New Holland T4 110, 2,102 hours on it with a loader went for $52,000. Well, the used combine market has been really interesting, folks. Uh, beginning back about end of the first week of December of 22, I started to see auction prices soften up on one to three year old models, but I've been seeing strong continuing demand on slightly older combines in good condition, and we sure saw that today on our feature item on the auction for the Darby's uh, online retirement auction in Allegan, Michigan, that 2014 Case IH 9230, 2,397 engine hours on it, so over 165 and a quarter. It's actually the highest auction price ever on a Case IH 9230 combine with over 1,800 engine hours on it. And again, this one was right about 2,400. So we will see you back here next week on Machinery PTV, folks. Trust me, we'll have some more interesting equipment for you to talk about. Machinery Pete thanks these premier sponsors for their support. Sullivan Auctioneers, a big iron company. Let our team of professionals show you how to make your auction a success. Visit SullivanAuctioneers.com. For farmers working to lift, change, and repair tires, check out the Tire Grabber at TheTireGrabber.com. Big Iron Auctions and the Share Your Legacy program, promoting the future of agriculture with amazing legacy stories from across America.